So we have our horizontal set of equations, our vertical set, what everybody here stands for. Uh, the value that we're using for gravity in this course is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. Just makes the calculations a little bit more easy. Um, so guys, the, these equations are not difficult to like navigate through. A lot of times people just freak out because they they see so many little like different variables. They're like, all right, it's overload. But once you know what those mean, these actually become very, very simple. Again, the triangle, cover up the variable you're looking for. It tells you what to do. So displacement in the x direction. So how, what that's going to be is like how far from the base or how far from the cliff or how far from the building was this thing you know, launched or how far did it go? That's your essentially your dx, your, your um, displacement in the x direction. So we have delta x. If you cover that up, it's horizontal velocity times time. Then you have your vertical displacement. Sometimes you know it can be shown as just delta y or whatever. That is going to vary depending upon the source of information you're looking at. But this is how I'm writing it out. So the actual equation for that, if we are given a some sort of a initial velocity in the y direction, would be the initial velocity in the y times time plus one half gt squared. But we're going to be working on problems that are just launched straight horizontal. So there is not going to be any vertical component to it, vertical speed to it originally. So that first thing would be zero times time. So we just cut it out. So it's just going to be one half gt squared. Uh, the vertical velocity is just going to be gravity times time. So if I said, hey, this object has been falling for two seconds, t is two. Gravity, the value we're using is negative 10. So negative 10 times two, negative 20 meters per second. The negative is indicating that it's going downward. Um, and then your final velocity. If you knew how far it was, how far it's fallen, um, times it by gravity, get that value, then square root that whole answer, you can get the uh, final velocity in that y direction. So here in number one, it says that a baseball is going to be dropped off a cliff and that it's going to accelerate to the ground at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. Meanwhile, a cannonball is going to shoot completely horizontally a cannon, and that is going to move at a horizontal speed or velocity of 20 meters per second. So that would be our Vx. Now it wants us to fill in these tables to the right. X is horizontal position. Y or dy is our vertical position. Okay, and then we have a scale, all that kind of good, good. So they want us to find, first of all, the uh, its vertical displacement. So I go up and I look for my equation, dy, which is one half of g times t squared. So very simple. We're going to just take the time, square it, times it by negative 10 for g, and then divide it by 2. So 0 squared is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So at 0 seconds, we're not displaced at all. At 1 second, 1 squared is 1. 1 times g, which is negative 10, is negative 10. Cut that in half, negative 5. 2 squared. What's 2 squared? All right, 4 times negative 10. Cut it in half. Negative 20 meters. I'm not writing the meters on this right now because, like, the... This whole thing will like freak out. It's, the table's pain in the butt. Um, so three squared is nine. Nine times negative ten is negative nine. You cut that in half. Negative forty-five meters. Then you would have this dude here. Negative four. So sixteen times negative ten. One negative one sixty divided by two. Negative eighty. Five squared is twenty-five times negative ten. Negative 250, cut that in half, and you're going to get negative 125. All right, you see how that just happened? If you're looking at my screen, guys, like how it bumped down. yeah, how it bumped down. When that happened, I just typed in 125. This picture like jumped down, and that screws up like the other picture. This picture like gets overlapped on the other one. So you can do one of two things: you can take this piece here and just scoot it over a smidge. All right. You, you want to make sure that this picture stays on the first page. Otherwise, it's no good. Or, yeah, or you can change the font size. You can change it from 
you know, 12 to 11, whatever. Okay, that was easy. Now, yesterday we talked about how our, in that little simulation, when we shot something off of all right, a ledge uh, with a angle of zero, the horizontal velocity never changed. We saw that vector arrow never change size. And so why doesn't the horizontal velocity ever change? Why is it always constant? Because, again, in a vacuum, there are no blank in the x direction. Begins with an F. Forces. So, right, this cannonball shoots this uh, the can or the cannon shoots the ball out, and there are there's nothing behind it. Once the ball leaves the barrel, there's nothing behind it pushing it to cause it to accelerate. And if there's no air resistance, there's nothing basically causing it to slow down. So it's going to move at a constant speed. So when they want us to find x here in this in this column, all right, we're looking for our displacement in the x direction. If I covered that up in the triangle. It's telling me to take Vx times time. So since our starting velocity doesn't change, we're literally just going to be using our horizontal speed of 20 and multiplying it by the set number of seconds. So 0 times 20, 0. 1 times 20, 20. And then just kind of go down the list. And that's for the x column? That is, yeah, that's for the horizontal displacement. That should Now that should always increase by the same amount because it's not accelerating or decelerating, it's it's at a constant. So it's always going to cover that same amount of meters or whatever unit of distance every second. Okay, well, now our vertical displacement again, dy. You're using this same equation. dy, 1 half gt squared, 0 squared is 0, 0 times anything is 0. 1 squared is 1 times negative 10 divided by 2, negative 5. Um, t, if t is 2, 2 squared is 4, times negative 10, negative 40, divided by 2, negative 20. And what you should hope, what I hope you guys see is that, look at the first three over here on this column for dy, and look at the second three over here. They are the same. Again, because we're neglecting all kinds of air resistance, so the only thing affecting the motion of the object is gravity. And in the y direction, Gravity is just, that's the only thing that's do, like working. That's, it. that's what's changing the distance or displacement and changing the speed. Nothing can happen in the x direction, right? The only basically thing that's going to affect how far it moves is how long it's in the air because the horizontal velocity does not change. So we could just fill these guys in as well. If you want to work out the math, it comes out to be the exact same. And again, we want to make sure on this dock that this thing stays put. All right, so our picture stays on this page. Okay, so with all that being said, to get onto this picture, guys, we have to, it wants us to um, scale here and basically make a line to indicate the trajectory of the cannonball and or baseball. So what I'm going to do here is what you would do, guys, as well, is you, if you click on the picture, all right, and then this little edit button should show up. You're going to click on the edit button. All right, hopefully everyone did that and is doing it currently and not on their phones. <clears throat> now, I already kind of drew this in before, so I'm just going to leave it here. Um, this would be where the baseball is uh, at select positions. All right, so we at about here, that negative 125, 120, that's 40, right? So this would be 45, there. What'd you do to get those little circles? Yeah. The circles are a pain, um, but to do those, you would have to go to like shapes. You're not gonna, I'm not gonna have you guys do the draw the circles in, but if you were to do that, you go, go to uh, this piece here, shapes, find your circles, and then make these. All right, so the reason I want to have those guys in first is 
this is what we what it would look like if we just drop the ball vertically straight down one second later it's at five meters below two seconds now it's at 20. three seconds later now it's at 45. four seconds off the rip we're at 80 and five seconds now we're at 125 below what do you notice about the distance between the ball every second is it the same is it decreasing or is it increasing yeah it's increasing so the distance all right is increasing as it falls why would that be gravity gravity is doing what pulling it down but more so it's accelerating it. so what's happening is that every second this thing is falling it's picking up speed so let's just say the first second you're moving 10 meters per second versus the second second you're now moving at 20. you're going to cover more ground when you're moving at 20 meters per second than you are at 10. so it should make sense that you are moving a greater distance during that that one second interval so every second so now that is moving faster it's covering more ground so you can see how this starts off like low low and then it starts to gain well over here these blue dots are to represent the cannonball and notice that these dudes are pretty much equally spaced and that is because this is to represent the ball's position after every single second in the x direction only so if we were to magically be able to shut gravity off and shoot the cannon all right the ball would move just like that perfectly flat line all right so straight line constant speed that's a constant velocity forever right hmm no forever if yeah unless it unless something acted upon it to cause it or to change its motion but if not and if it was neglecting any kind of effects of yeah technically it would just kind of keep going and going so what they actually actually wanted was basically if we could take these dots and kind of move them over to this page all right and match the seconds so one second over here is one second this would be two seconds three seconds four seconds five seconds so what i'm going to ask you guys to do instead of drawing these circles we're going to go to this so where it says select line right here this little line button a little down arrow right to the uh, right of that if you click on that and you go down a curve I want you to click that okay so again where is that line a little down arrow select down and then go to curve and you're gonna click on that and then just wait for my instruction the, curve. not the arrow when you sit selects right so normally it shows shows line so normally it looks like this it just shows line but yes you hit the little down button and then you're going to click curve and then just hold it. All right, we're going to give me a second. All right, so hopefully everybody's there. Now, right off the rip, this is at time zero, zero seconds, where the cannonball is literally just at the mouth of the cannon itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our first click there. And then you get this little spider web looking thing that shoots out. And then from there, one second later, this is where the cannonball would be. Where would the baseball have been? At five meters below. So each one of these little tick marks is five meters. So I'm going to find that first tick mark, which looks about here. And under the first cannonball, I'm going to make that click. So you find that first tick mark down, and you're going to click. Now, again, we should be able to, uh, we're still going to have this little thingy here, this little web-looking nonsense, but that's okay. At two seconds, our distance, our vertical displacement would be negative 20. So I'm um, at second number two. I'm going to go down to 20, and I'm going to make a click here. You, you may have double. You may have double clicked it by accident. Hmm. Wait, is there another one where we could have it? If you needed to get rid of it, right? If I like, let's say I just accidentally double clicked this, and now I got something that looks like this. Oh, you double clicked it to get rid of it. Yeah, you would double click to stop, and now like, all right, all right, crap, I messed up on mine. So ready? I'm just gonna undo that whole thing. 
If you double clicked, right, and it looks something like that, you got to hold this whole double click. All right, I'm done with it. We don't want that shit anymore. Get rid of it. I'm going to select line curve starting at the curve, starting at zero. One second now, we should be down five meters. Make your first click. Second, second, we should be down at 20. Make our another, make our other click. At three seconds, three squared is nine. Nine times negative 10 is negative 90 divided by two, negative 45. So in the, at th second number three, we should be down at 45. So if this is 40, that tick mark below that is 45. I'm going to make a click there. The next one from our graph, 4 squared times negative 10 would be negative 160 divided by 2, which is 80. So at 4 seconds, I'm going to be here at 80 meters. Make a click. And then my last one, uh, 5 squared times negative 10 divided by 2 is going to be one, negative 125. So I'm going to be at this 125. Now that's going to be my last click, so I'm going to double click it. And then you should look something like that. You still have a line? Yeah. Did you double click? Yeah, it's like highlighted in black, but I still have a line. How would you do that? Hit the link, hit backspace. Huh? Hit, hit backspace and that might get rid of that second thing. Then what I'm doing is I'm going to just change the color of the line by hitting this little pencil looking thing. I'm going to change it to red. Well, let me go back and let me delete stuff. Um, hold on, give me one second. I'll take a look. And then I'm changing the weight of the line to like three or four to make it look thicker and so it's easier for us to see. And now. Before I accidentally click anywhere else, I, you would hit the select button, and now I can kind of move around without having to worry about accidentally like getting like another little stem popping off of it. Oh, All right, that worked. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, between these two pictures, what's going on? If I were to have these circles basically transferred over, they would be at these exact points. In, in time and they would match up with all right, our drawings. So basically this is saying that the x component, this x velocity has no effect on the fact that this object falls to the ground and falls the same distance downward. All right, it's still, at one second it's still five, at two seconds it's still 20, at three it's 45, at four it's 80, and at five is 125. That's still the same. So then I'm going to save and close. <clears throat> so it asks then which of the two balls would strike the ground the first, or would strike the ground first? Again, based off of our uh, little simulation thing that we ran yesterday, if we basically just dropped one and launched one. It's identical objects, same height, same time, they're going to hit the ground at the same time. So you guys would fill that in. Okay. They would strike the ground at the same time. And then for four, it says to compare the two diagrams, the free fall vertical motion of the uh, dude on the left and the two-dimensional free fall motion on the right, what effect does the horizontal motion have on the vertical motion? Does the fact that this thing got shot, all right, this cannonball got shot out of the cannon at 20 meters per second, did that even bother or affect how much it fell every second? No. So the horizontal motion has no effect on the vertical motion. They still fell the same amount of distance, the same amount of time. So the horizontal motion has no effect on the vertical motion. Okay, so we're now in number five, <clears throat> the diagram below shows the trajectory of this horizontally launched projectile. The positions of the projectile are at one second intervals. So this right here is time of zero seconds. 
the next ball would be one second, two seconds, three seconds, four, and five. So it asks you to demonstrate your understanding of the concepts of the displacement vectors by determining the horizontal displacement, all right, delta x, and your vertical displacement here, dy. All right, delta x, dy, after the fifth second. So basically they say, okay, find the fifth second ball. So if this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. From where this object is, from where the cannonball is at this second, if I wanted to know how far to the right it went, what number, what set am I looking at? The numbers up top or the numbers on the side? That's going to tell me how far to the right it went? No. Guys up top. So if I find the cannonball, the center of that, and go straight up, and that is chilling right now at 250 meters. Okay, then I go to it again, and these numbers on the right-hand side are indicating the um, amount that it has fallen. So if this was our original position, we are now 125 meters below that. So our dx would happen to be, or I'm sorry, our dy would happen to be that negative 125 meters. That it would be the that's uh, our displacement. But if they asked it or word the the question, what is the height of this cliff? Then you would just drop the negative because you can't have a negative height. Well, what if I know it's not on here, but if I asked you guys, how would you figure out the dx of this? I'm sorry, the vx. How would I figure out the horizontal velocity of this drawing here? If I went up and I wanted to know what Vx was, what is Vx? If I cover that up in the triangle, I'm divide doing your, uh, displacement and uh, divide displacement over time. All right, so my horizontal displacement is 50 meters in how many seconds? This is one second. So 50 over one is 50, right? Okay, well, just making sure. Well, what's 100 divided by? This would be the second second. So 100 divided by two, 50. Then the third second, 150 divided by 3 is 50. 200 divided by 4, 50. 250 divided by 5, 50. So that should that should make sense because the horizontal velocity wouldn't change. Okay, the next segment. So they're telling us that a ball is launched completely horizontal off the top of a cliff that had an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. So that's going to be our velocity in the x direction because we're launching it completely horizontal. That means there is no vertical speed to it whatsoever. And then they're going to say, okay, well, here's the trajectory of the ball as it is shown. Express your understanding by filling in the blanks. All right, so to get to add this, pay attention, please, because I had people that weren't and they were, I was getting emails about this because I don't know how to change it on the picture or write it on the picture. If you click on the picture, you can edit this, okay, in Google, in Google Drawing again. So you would click on the picture, and you're going to hit edit. Hmm? Yep. So we have to fill in the horizontal velocities Vx and the vertical velocities Vy. All right, well, keeping that in mind, Vx should be pretty simple, right? Why should that be pretty simple? Because our horizontal velocity never changes. It's constant. So you literally got to hit and make a text box. Hopefully you guys know how to use a text box. All right. And it's going to be negative, or sorry, it's just going to be 20, not negative. So it's 20 meters per second. Um, so to do added it into the other uh, spots, you're going to use the text box again, and it is going to be 20 meters per second again. And you're going to fill that in for your, your Vx's, all of your horizontal velocities.
Now I'm going to exit out of this for one second because to answer the question for Vy, well, we haven't really done that yet. We actually slightly did uh, two days ago. Uh, or not, no, Monday. Monday, we were doing free fall slash vertical motion. So to find the vertical velocity of an object, it's initial velocity plus gravity times time. But that's your initial velocity in the y direction, which we don't have. So literally, the equation is just going to be, all right, to find vertical velocity, the y, velocity in the y direction. It's gravity times time. And again, we're using negative 10 for gravity. So it's literally going to be just negative 10 times the time. So this becomes wicked easy. Text box. Okay, what's negative 10 times 1? Hell yeah, negative 10. Now the negative is just telling us that it's on the way downward. Negative 10 times 2 seconds. Mm-hmm. Very good. Negative 20. Okay, why is this all funky? That's how we're doing too, but I see one. Hmm. That was a pain in the ass. Okay, next one. What should the next one be? Good. And our fourth one. Correct. Even though it's not labeled here, <clears throat> if I asked you, okay, well, what would the what would it be if we were at six seconds? It would be negative sixty, and what would the VX be? 20 still. Good. Okay. So then I'm saving and closing that, John. And then the last couple questions. So for seven, based off of that piece here in number six, so if the diagram above strikes, if the ball strikes the ground in four seconds, how high was the cliff and then how far from the base? So what the hell are they asking for? How high is that? So if we're dealing with height, we're in the set of vertical equations. Which one of these three is height? DY, VY, or VFY? No. This top one, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to control C this, copy it, and I'm going to move it down here. And then underneath this, just do the work here. 1 half G is negative 10 times t squared. They're saying it was four seconds, so I'm doing four. How do we get the squared? How do we get like the exponent function on this control period? Good. Have you been trying to do I just I just went up to the top and just copied oh, this I whole thing. It, what does it have? Just dy? Yeah. Alright, then just use that. It, it doesn't necessarily matter. Um it it's yeah it's the same thing. So control period again to get out of that. Okay, and this is going to give me what is that going to be? Negative 80 meters as my displacement. So I'm 80. Uh, that means the ball would have fallen 80 meters. But they're asking what the height. So what is the height? 80 meters. Good. Because remember, you just can't have a negative height. And then B asks, how far, how far from the base? How far from the base of the building can you throw a ball? Are you is that vertical or is that horizontal? That should be horizontal. So I would go then to my horizontal set of equations. And because they're asking how far, we're looking for our delta x, our displacement. So our equation would be this guy. So I'm just going to control C this and come back down and paste it. So this would equal, oh, what the hell was our VX? Scroll back to number six. 
VX was 20, which never changed. So we're doing 20 times 4 seconds. So, oh, undo. So, delta X, do, do. Stop being a scotch here. Okay, so delta X would be this 20 times 4, it would be 80 meters. So, yes, we would land 80 meters from the base of the cliff, and we would have fallen a total of. We would have fallen a total of uh, 80 meters as well. And then the last question, number eight. If the ball's initial speed in question six was 16 meters per second, how far from the cliff would the ball have landed? Do we think it would be farther or less? So they're not saying the height changed. All right. So if the ball's initial speed was 16 seconds, and we said it hits the ground in four seconds. So instead of this being 20, it would be 16. So if I wanted to know, again, this equation, delta x is vx times time. So we would have this being 16 meters per second instead of 20. So 16 times 4. And that will give us an answer of 64. And the unit will be meters. Hopefully that, that's everybody's good and able to, uh, yeah, if you have it complete, you're able definitely to turn it in, and you should. And hopefully, guys, this kind of walks you through the idea that the horizontal motion has no effect on the vertical motion whatsoever. The vertical velocity is going to remain constant every single time, but the vertical, I'm sorry, the horizontal velocity remains constant every time the vertical velocity changes because it's accelerating, so it's going to increase as it falls. And therefore, the displacement is going to get bigger every second because you're, you're gaining speed, so you're going to move greater distance in those uh, seconds. All right, so tomorrow we're going to look at basically using the same equations. Um, But in this case, we're going to basically be doing something like this. All right, uh, we're going to in these kind of problems. You're usually going to be given time or need to find time first. So you're going to only find time basically one of two ways: using this triangle for the horizontal motion. All right, t would equal displacement over v x. So if you had both of those, you can find time. And then basically, then you're going to go into the other set. So if you use this equation to find time. Then you're going to need it probably to throw back in here to solve for either the vertical velocity or the vertical displacement. If they ask you to find time and they give you the height, you would use this. And if that's the case, then you would use time with one of these two to solve for the other. All right, so we're going to deal with that tomorrow.